If you uh, want to ask a question, I think you must have been there from the beginning of the retreat. Because if you just arrived yesterday, you cannot ask a question. Because that question of yours might have been answered already (laughs) during the last five days. So we urge that those uh, who have been there from the beginning to come and ask your question. One question only for each person. The question of the heart. And you are invited to come here and sit close so that when your time comes, uh, you don't have to move from down there up here. And if you need someone to translate to you, uh, well, she or he will come with you. You might ask your question in English, uh, French, German, Vietnamese, Hebrew, Arabic. Translate from (laughs) here. And you have a microphone for your use. Breathing in, I see the flowers, the chrysanthemums before me. Breathing out, I smile to them. Come and sit close to us. Good morning, my dear friends. Uh, today is uh, October the 24th in the year 2003, and we are in the Loving Kindness Temple of the New Hamlet during our uh, Israelo Palestinian retreat. Today we have a full session of uh, questions and answers, and this is uh, the first question. Bonjour cher Thaï, bonjour cher Sangha. Je suis très heureuse et en même temps très émue d'être ici, bien sûr, près de notre cher maître. Ça fait très longtemps que je souhaite être à cette place et puis je n'ai jamais osé. Je suis venue ici dans cette retraite pour retrouver en moi un processus de paix qui s'était beaucoup terni ces derniers temps. Je pense avoir, euh, pouvoir repartir à la maison 
avec euh, des graines de cette paix en moi. Je pense aussi avoir euh, les éléments qu'il faut pour euh, arroser ces graines. Cependant, euh, quand je rentre à la maison, le démarrage de ce processus de paix doit pour moi commencer par un retrait. Parce que tout de suite, une communication ne pourra pas s'établir. Parce que nous sommes allés trop loin dans... dans la compréhension mutuelle. Donc, je vais devoir m'éloigner de cette personne pour que trois personnes puissent retrouver la paix. Donc déjà, ma première question, c'est est-ce que vous pensez que le retrait, quelquefois, pour rétablir la paix en soi est un processus ou une tactique à droite pour que cette paix puisse vraiment s'installer dans, dans mon cœur et dans le cœur de l'autre personne. Someone translate that into English, please. Je, je voudrais préciser aussi que j'ai pratiqué du 1er au 21 septembre euh, des touchés de la terre et euh, j'ai réalisé combien j'étais impuissante pour, euh, euh, pour tout ce qui est la filiation de, de mon petit garçon du côté de son papa et que je, je sais... Euh, je sais, je sens les souffrances qu'il peut y avoir aussi euh, du côté de son papa. Je ne dis pas que ces 21 touchés de la terre ont nettoyé en moi tout un, tout un héritage. Mais euh, la question que je me suis posée, que j'ai aussi posée à son papa, c'est comment est-ce qu'on peut faire pour, euh, pour nous-mêmes, tout d'abord, et pour euh, éviter des souffrances euh, à transmettre à, à ce petit garçon C'est une, une autre question, peut-être que je ne sais pas si je peux la poser aussi. Um, in the first part of the, the question, uh, she was uh, saying too that uh, she was uh, here for the whole uh, retreat and 
she was feeling uh, uh, she's going back home with a lot of tools that she learned during the retreat. Uh, then the second part of the question is for 21 days she practiced uh, touching of the earth uh, and uh, she was not able to be in touch with uh, uh, the side of her husband and sisters uh, and she's, she feels that it's impossible for her to do that. Uh, so she, but she would like because uh, it's a part of her, of her son. So the side of the ancestor of her husband are part of her son. And, uh, but she feels that she cannot be in touch with, uh, with this part. Uh, and she needs some help for that. You think that I can answer this question? <laughs> it's not an answer that can help you. Even if the answer is a, a superb one. Once upon a time, there was a, a mountain where uh, many gods live. And the gods uh, living on, on the mountain, they seem to be very happy. They uh, did not seem to have anything to do. They spent a lot of time just sitting and walking. It was a very beautiful uh, creek on the mountain. The water is very clear, very limpid. And it seems that every time uh, you come and take a little bit of that water and drink, you feel, you feel light, you feel uh, liberated. You don't feel any desire or any anger in you. And along the creek, there, there, there were uh, many uh, cherry uh, trees that seem to bloom all year. And the cherry uh, blossoms fall uh, into the stream and uh, they flow with the water and some of them uh, go ve went very far until uh, they reach uh, a city of people, uh, of um, mortal people. Uh, who lived there. And then there was a person who, uh, who suffered so much. And uh, suffered so much that uh, she wanted to, uh, he wanted to, uh, to die.
and that person happened to see a petal of the cherry flowers, and she and he tried to uh, to follow the stream of water, yeah. and he told himself that uh, um, that um, even if he has to spend many many years. Uh, to find the source of the place, uh, he will he will he will be ready to do so. So that person, uh, after so many years of uh, walking, uh, was able to to arrive at the mountain of the gods. And uh, he met with uh, the gods, and the gods asked, uh, invite him to come and sit close to the the creek, and they invited uh, him to uh, kneel down and to cup some water from the creek and to drink. After having drunk that water, the person felt uh, he did not have any more desire, even the desire for healing and transforming. He felt very tired. He didn't want anything else. He wanted to give up everything. And then he was attempted to lie down by the creek. And he went into a very deep sleep. And during his sleep, the water continues to work within his body and his mind, transforming, purifying. And because uh, the man was able uh, to allow himself to be in a very deep sleep, that was why uh, the work of healing and transformation became very easy for, for him. He did not do anything at all. He just allowed himself to be lying uh, by the creek and allowed the water he drank to work for him. And some of the, God, of the gods took care of him. They went into the creek and took uh, two uh, little pebbles that looked like uh, emerald. And they, they, they look very limpid like the eyes of uh, a cat. And they, they, they went to the man who was sleeping on the bank of the creek. And they replace his eyes with these two pebbles. They replace his eyes with new, uh, new eyes. I remember that one time I went to a doctor, and I asked uh, the doctor to replace. Uh, I had a cataract. It was like that. Uh, the gods uh, were doing something like that. He replaced uh, the eyes of the man and replaced uh, and and uh, and put uh, in new eyes. It was done in just one or two minutes. The doctor took half an hour, but well, the gods took only half a minute. And the man slept for something for a long time. He did not eat, he did not drink anything. That amount of water he had drunk was, was enough. And then he woke up after one week. He was very surprised. He sat up and he began to see the sky. Uh, to, he began to see the, the sky and the trees. He never had, he had never, he had never seen the sky like that. He had never seen the trees like that. When he arrived, 
well, there was a sky, there was tree, but he did not see them like he sees now because he has new eyes. And everything in him has been changed. He has got new bones. He has got new heart, a new heart. He has got new intestines. So he's completely transformed. He feels like he is one of the gods. And then he does not want to go home anymore. I don't want to go home to that place. No, no. I want to stay here with you. And then God said that you got to go home. You got to go home to help your people. If I go home, he said, I will be all alone. I cannot cope with the situation back there, down there. It's so difficult. No, I, want, I never want to go back to that place again. And God said, well, when you go home, you won't see things exactly like uh, you have seen in the past. You see the sky. You see the trees. You see the houses. You see the people. But they would not look like before. It's like here, when you come, you, you saw the sky, and you saw the trees, but after a week, well, you really see the, the sky, you, you really see the trees. So don't be afraid, go, go home to that place, and with your new eyes, your new lungs, your new bones, you see things differently, and you don't have to suffer. And what? And you know something? When you go back there, you see us. We are not really staying here. We are down there at the same time with you. And the man understood. So he said goodbye to the gods, to the mountain, to the stream, and he began his journey down. It did not take a long time. It did not take uh, several years to come. Like uh, when he came, it just took just took a, a morning in order to, for him to went down. And the gods were right. When he went home with his new being, he did not see the situation as difficult, as, uh, um, as um, despairing as he has seen before. He was able to look with compassion, with clarity, and his heart is opened. He discovers human beings. He, 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 he felt compassion in him arising because he saw that uh, many human beings are being caught in, uh, in ideas, in uh, ideologies, in religion, in culture, and that is why the true person, the true human nature cannot be, be seen. But now, because, as, because he is already a free person, uh, he is free from all these kind of uh, garment, garments. That is why he could uh, detect, he could discover the human being in every one of them. And that is why when they look, uh, he looked at them, they listened to them, he, doesn't, he did not get angry anymore. He did not get uh, frustrated anymore. And with his smile, with his uh, look, he can help them to transform. And he found out that he was not alone at all. All the gods that he found in mountain are right there to help him, to be with him. The story is a happy story because the man was able to spend seven days on the mountains and allow himself to be the object of uh, transformation and healing of the water, the water of compassion. In fact, he did not do anything at all during the time he spent in the mountain. He did not practice. He did not do anything. He practiced the practice of non-practice. He just allowed himself to be embraced by the mountain, by the creek, by, by the trees. 
He got renewed. He got new eyes. He got new ears. He got new bones, new heart. And that is why he was able to go home without fear and with a lot of compassion. And uh, if he had been there, only looking for ideas, looking for answers to bring home, he would not be able to do so. He, he had not come to look for, for theory, for ideologies, for tactics, for strategies. He had come in order to be renewed. And he allowed himself to be renewed. And when he went home, he did not bring anything with him. Absolutely nothing in terms of teachings, uh, ideologies, uh, practice, even practice, and even answers, even their superb answers. He did not bring home anything. He just bring himself back because he was totally renewed. And that is why I don't think that answer will help you. Uh, you, you. If you got your eyes changed, your heart changed, and then you don't need anything else. You don't need any practice. You don't need any uh, strategy. That is it. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your steps. have been answered already. I have a request. Um, first of all, I, I would like to tell you that uh, this is a, the story. You can hear? Something is wrong. No, it should be. Maybe I need a little more time before I could really express myself and let you hear. Um, as all the questions have been answered, Already, I have a request, not a question. But first I want to tell you that uh, the story that you have just told, it is really a real story, it's about me. <laughs> and I'm very happy. Um, and my request is, um, I don't know how to how to put it. Uh, I I could say that uh, once upon a time I was a very angry person. <laughs> and still sometimes I'm still very angry. And I realized over the over the years and over the the work that I've been doing that um, the most difficult thing for me was to express myself saying my suffering. Um, it was 
um, more easy to be angry, more immediate, more um, full of energy, as if, and uh, to transform my anger, my expressing anger to expressing suffering was the most, and still is the most difficult thing for me. And I realize that for many of us, there are many angry people here that I know, that I hear, that I feel. And uh, I know that whenever they express, we express anger, we actually don't know how to say skillfully, please Sangha, bear with us, we, are, we suffer, we are suffering. Now, there is, when I listen to someone else who is suffering, I feel like I need to be, to, to give, I need to give all my attention and all my energy uh, to this person. And I, I also need sometimes and some opportunities to express my suffering and I don't want to compete suffering. I listen to the Palestinian suffering and I feel very, very sad, very painful. But I, at the same time, I, I can't, I do not dare to express my own suffering at the same time, as if this is not the proper time, it's not appropriate. <coughs> I don't want to um, compare suffering because there is no comparison to suffering. And so what my request is, if you could, um, I don't know what I want to request, but I think that I and other people from my name, from my other Jewish people, other Israeli Jewish people, need a very long time and patience and compassion. so that they can be more compassionate to the others. I think the Israelis, uh, the Jews, they, they are they, they think they are not Vietnamese, but they, they, are, they are very similar to Vietnamese. They think that they are not, they, they are not uh, Arabs, but they, they have so many things that, uh, that look like the Arabs. They are human beings like us. You are human beings like us. You don't want, they don't want to die. They want to live. And with, uh, with uh, safety. So they are not different from Vietnamese or Arabs or Palestinians. They are not Vietnamese. They are not Arabs. But they, they look, they, uh, they are very similar. They don't want to die. They want to be alive. They want uh, brotherhood. They want peace. But sometimes if, uh, if they think that uh, they have to die for a cause, they're ready to die. The, Vietnam the Vietnamese are like that too. And the Arabs are like that too. They want to be alive. They, want, they don't want to die. But uh, when they think that they have to sacrifice themselves, they have to die for a, some cause, they are ready to die. So, 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 so we are not so different from the other, the other people. 
are separated by names, like a Buddhist, like a Jews, like um, Muslims, and so on. And when we hear this word and we see this kind of image, we feel alienated. We don't feel communication. We have set up many things like that in order for us to be separated from each other and make each other suffer. And that is why it's very important to discover the human being in the other person and to help the other person to discover the human being in us. As a human being, we are, we are exactly the same. And that is why if you have so many layers of ropes of garments, uh, you prevent other people to see you as a human being. And being a Buddhist uh, may be a disadvantage because uh, if you wear uh, uh, the title Buddhist, Buddh- Buddhism, and then mm, that is an obstacle. They cannot discover the human being in you. Uh, and if you have the label, label uh, uh, Muslim in you, and that might turn many people off. It's a pity. Because people are caught in these notions, in these images, and they cannot uh, 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 recognize us as human beings. And that is why Master Ling Chi said that you have to burn all these things. Take them out and burn all of them. And this is a true practice, to burn everything in order for the human being to be revealed. That is the work for peace. I remember in 1963, I was sitting with a number of my students in uh, the campus of uh, Columbia University. We had, uh, the morning was uh, beautiful, and we were in the sunshine and talking to each other about the Buddhist practice of uh, removing concepts and so on. And suddenly there was someone passing by. He stopped and looked at me for a few seconds, and then he asked, are you a Buddhist? I looked up, I said, no. (laughs) Did I tell a lie? I hope that my students understood me at that time. Because uh, if I said, yes, I'm a Buddhist, and then he, he, he be caught in his idea of what a Buddhist is, and did, that did not help him. So my no is more helpful than my yes. That's the language of Zen. Uh, when you say something, you do something, that is to undo uh, the knots in the, heart, in the mind of the people and not to bind them in, 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 anymore. And that is why that, uh, the language should aim at liberation. When you listen to the Palestinians and all the suffering they undergo, we understand. We understand the suffering because we have suffered. We don't want to compare our suffering with theirs. But we understand suffering as a reality. That that is the first noble truth. Suffering is. And of course, we want, to, we want that suffering to stop. We don't want to, them to suffer anymore. But when the Palestinians ask us, we suffer like that, we have been victims like that, you, will you take our side? Will you be with me in order to oppose all those who have created the suffering? That will be a very difficult question to answer. You are with them. You understand deeply their, their question, uh, their, their, their suffering. But when you are asked to join them in the fight to destroy what they, what they be, believe to be their enemies, you are reluctant. Because we know that uh, they have tried to do that for many years. 
they have not succeeded and they have had supporters they were not alone they, they have had supporters in the country and outside of the country but that course of action trying to destroy what we call uh, their enemies have not brought about anything has not lessened their suffering in fact it has increased their suffering so i am reluctant to say that i am on your side i supported wholeheartedly uh, you wholeheartedly and i i will do everything you want me to do i'm not ready to take side like that i will ask them yes i'm ready to take your side but are you ready to take my side because i am a human being like you and you know what my side is my side is i want I share with you that suffering must stop. Uh, I agree with you that something should be done in order for the suffering to stop. I agree with you about these two things. Suffering has to stop. There must be something that could be done, that should be done in order for the suffering to stop. I agree with you that I am one percent with you on that. But on other things. Relating your position, well, I may not agree. I want to act. I want to have compassion. But uh, I don't want to act out of anger, violence, discrimination. And if you take my side, well, I'm be with you 100%. Because this is a, a, not a one way. When you support someone, well, you bring your whole being in order to support. But in your being, there is, a, there, there, there is your wisdom, there is your, your, um, um, your compassion. And without that wisdom and compassion, uh, you cannot support someone. If I take your side, I'm not going to, to, to bring a bomb with you in order to to come with you to a bus and blow off the lives of people sitting on the bus. Although I am with you in your suffering and in your desire to end suffering, I cannot be with you in that kind of act. I believe that uh, there are many ways in order to stop the suffering. To help us, to help uh, our people to talk stop the suffering, but to help the so-called enemies to stop suffering also. And for me, there is a way, there is a path that is quite clear. If we keep these poisons within us, we will suffer a lot. And what uh, we do will not be for our benefit and for the benefit of our people, and for their benefit. And these poisons are despair, and anger, and violence. And that is why to go to the mountain, to lie down and allow the water of compassion to transform you, to take out these elements of this poison in you is a very crucial. I'm not here on the mountain to ask the God to join me in fighting my enemies. I'm here in order to allow the God to help me uh, to take out the, viol- the, the poisons of violence, of fear, of despair, of anger out of me. And then I know if I go home as a new person, I can help many people, my people, and maybe I can help them also because now I am equipped with uh, uh, elements, new elements, the elements of understanding, compassion, serenity, and solidity. And when the, the Israelis came and described to us their suffering, we are able to listen and to see that not only the Palestinians have suffered, but the Israelis have also suffered a lot. They wanted to be alive. They want 
they don't want to die. Uh, but uh, they have suffered for a long time because what they 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 want uh, 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 safety uh, has not been a reality. They are losing that safety every day. Uh, not only the adults suffer, but the children also suffer. There are those <coughs> who die in bombs attacks. They have not done anything to deserve that kind of punishment. They even don't have uh, anger and hate in them, and yet they have to die. Injustice. Injustice is suffered not only by one side, but both sides. And that kind of understanding is very crucial. One's understanding and compassion are born in our heart. And the poisons of anger, of discrimination, of hate, of despair uh, will transform. And that is why the only answer is to get the poison out, get the, get, get, get the insight and the compassion in. And then we will discover each other as human beings. And uh, we will not allow ourselves to be, to be deceived by the outer layers, like uh, Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, pro-American, pro-Arabian, and so on. This is a process of, uh, of liberation liberated from our ignorance, our ideas, our notions, from our tendency to discriminate. Because if I see you as a human being who suffers so much, I will have no courage to shoot you. I will ask you to come and we work together in order to, to, to have a chance to live peace, peacefully together. It's a pity that the earth is so beautiful, that uh, there are enough places for all of us, and yet we have to kill each other. Sing a song for us. <laughs> May I ask you a question first? Um, <laughs> I'd like to ask you a question first. And I want you to answer by just one word. I want to ask you a question. And I want you to answer me just by one word, yes or no. Mm. Are you ready? You answer in a Zen way, huh? What? <laughs> you know Zen? Yeah. You can give a Zen answer. Are you a Palestinian? I'm um, Palestinian, Israeli, both. That's good enough. <laughs> Go ahead with your question. <laughs> we are talking about Israeli Palestinian. Therefore, I am Palestinian Israeli. We are talking about two sides, and the two sides are not equal. One is strong, one is weak. One has all the weapons in the world and has the United States with him, and has all the vetoes of the United States with him. He has nuclear weapons. He has all the weapons of the world. 
we are not talking about equal sides. Uh, I want your answer about this formula, about not the equal sides. Thank you. You might be deceived by the appearance. So during the Vietnam War, everyone saw that America is uh, the big power, and the Vietnamese was just a tiny nation. They did not have the kind of weapons and technology and they did not have that huge amount of money that Americans had. But the Americans had to withdraw from Vietnam. So, so, so we should not be too sure of, uh, of, our, of our remark, of our uh, Suppose the Palestinians are more united. Suppose they talk to each other nicely, communicate to each other perfectly. Suppose they, they live in harmony. They treat each other like brothers and sisters in a community. They will be able to produce the kind of insight that can help them very strong, uh, to become very strong, so that they can protect themselves. They can set up a country for their own. And they have the world uh, uh, behind them, supporting them in the attempt to have their own uh, country, their own uh, territory, their own uh, uh, sovereignty. I don't think you, you need to be a big power in order to do that. You need to be intelligent, peaceful, harmonious in order to do so. So there are things within that you have to do. Don't think that uh, everything inside is okay. Now there only, there only are things outside to do. This is a big mistake. Going home to ourselves, rearrange so that we have harmony and peace inside that will bring, uh, bring us uh, a lot of power. And that power cannot be seen in, in terms of weapons, technologies, and soldiers. Let me tell you, suppose you have a family, of uh, 10 people. Well, in Vietnam, we used to have big families, sometimes more than 10 people. And if uh, there are two brothers fighting each other, What will the other members of the family uh, think and do? The two brothers are really angry at each other, and they can even can even kill each other because the anger is so much. You cannot stand there and allow your brothers to kill each other. At least one person will be killed, and if one member of your family is killed, you suffer as a family. But they are mad at each other. They don't have any, a, any lucidity 
anymore. They are carried away by their anger, their, their desire to, to hit, to kill. And then there is a, suppose there is another member of the family who try to take side to be with one brother against the other brother. And suppose there is another member of the family who want to take side of the other uh, brother in order to oppose this, uh, this brother. I don't think that is something very wise. Standing outside and observe, that's not wise. Joining one brother against another brother is not something wise either. I think uh, sensible people uh, will act something like this. They will come and try to separate the two brothers and hold each brother uh, like this and do not let them continue uh, uh, fighting. Because even if you hold very fast, very, very, very strongly, and then you feel the energy of resist. They don't want you to hold them. They want them to be free in order to kill the other person. And who are we? Who is the United Nations? Who is the community of nations? What is the community of all nations doing? They don't seem to do anything. France does not seem to do anything. Uh, the UK does not seem to do anything. Russia does not seem to do anything. Uh, uh, Canada does not seem to do anything. They leave everything to the United States of America. Uh, America is taking care. America may, be, may favor one side over the other side that we don't know. We always accuse that America uh, uh, is on, on one side. America is a big brother in the human family. And she has the tendency to to take to 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 do everything by herself. It does not allow other members of the of the of the family to come and and help. She wants to to take care of Iraq alone. She wanted to take care of the Middle East alone. I think the, the United Nations have to come together as a family of all nations and bring the discussion as how to end the violence in the Middle East right away, in a week, preventing holding the Palestinians like this very tight, holding the Israelis like this very tight. They can dispatch uh, Greenberry, many uh, uh, troops from many countries can come and play the role of, uh, of uh, peacekeeping, uh, not allow the, the fighting to continue. This is a very, very urgent, this is an emergency act. act. It's a very funny, very dis wish, uh, uh, um, disgusting. It's a very uh, despairing to see other members of the family sitting there and not doing anything, and just allow one, one, one country to take care. I think concerning the problem of Iraq. France, Germany, Russia have been trying to protest the fact that America was trying to do everything alone. And they have refused to send uh, uh, troops and money uh, to, uh, to help Americans. Because this, this is not the problem of uh, Americans alone. This is problem of the world. When something w goes wrong in a family, the whole family has to come and help. And that is why I think that, uh, that uh, we have to guard our brothers and sisters in the Middle East to allow that to happen. 
they have to allow the whole human family to come and 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 help them they should not resist such a move and the americans and other people have to have to wake up to that fact i think mr kofi annan has to convene a national uh, a, 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 a general assembly and uh, got the vote that the problem of uh, Iraq and the Middle East should be should be taken care of by the community of all nations, and the Security Council uh, should meet that day and night in order to decide how how to stop the atrocities in the Middle East right away. There are many means. They have to ask many countries: Japan, France, Germany, uh, Russia, China. Uh, 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 India, uh, Brazil, other countries to come, because this is this concern the whole family of human beings, and not just a few a few members. And that is why my 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 view my insight is that we should we should invest in the United Nation. America should invest in the United Nation. Uh, Israel also has to invest in the United Nations and allow the United Nations to become a real peace organization, peacekeeping organization. Because as it is now, the UN is not, is not, uh, does not have an, enough uh, authority and means in order to do it. Just because we don't believe in the family, we don't believe in the collective insight of the family. Many of us in many countries suffer very much because uh, we feel helpless. We feel that we cannot do anything to stop the atrocities in the Middle East. Because our countries do not seem to be able to play any role, even if they are presented, represented in the United Nations. And I think uh, if you are Otherwise, we go around like this. You arrive nowhere. This is my insight. I think Mr. Kofi Annan wants very much to do that. And you have, we have, I have, we have to support him. الشعب اليهودي بأوروبا تعرض للإبادة من قبل النازية النازية اللي كانت في ألمانيا الأوروبية لكن نحن كفلسطينيين لا نتحمل أي مسؤولية عن ذلك لكن كنا ضحايا كنا ضحايا لهذه الإبادة. Everybody knows what happened to the Jewish people in Europe because of the Nazi. But about the fascist and about the Nazi. Uh, but here in Palestine, not here, there in Palestine, I see that we are the victims what had happened to the Jews there. And also the Israeli people, the Israeli people, the Israeli people now, or he is the victim of the government, the current government that is the victim of the government, 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 <laughs> and I think that uh, the, Israeli, the Israeli people now are a victim of their fascist uh, government, which is building now the, the fence between the Israeli uh, territories and the Palestinian territories. The fence and 
and uh, making the Palestinian people refugees uh, more and more. أي أن الشعب الإسرائيلي والفلسطيني الآن هم ضحايا لحكومة الاحتلال. The Palestinian and the Israeli people now both are victims for the occupying government now in Israel. لأن لكل احتلال في ردات فعل ممكن مقاومة شعبية ممكن ممكن تفجيرات ممكن أن نختلف أو نتوافق مع طريقة مقاومة الاحتلال. Uh, every occupation, uh, the reaction of every occupation uh, must be a resistance. And uh, every people uh, choose their resistance. We might uh, not agree with each other about the, the, the kind of the resistance, but still there must be a resistance. So, <laughs> فكيف يطلب من الشعب المضطهد والمحتل أن يسامح محتلين؟ Thank you. Thank you. So I have not pronounced the word uh, forgiveness in the last five days. You use you translate it loud, aloud. You translate aloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You translate to him to hear, but uh, for other people to oh, okay. hear. Oh, okay, but speak a little. Yeah. Slowly. In the last five days, I have not pronounced the word forgiveness. Okay. In the last five days, yes. I have not pronounced the word forgiveness. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he said that he yesterday has heard the, the word forgiveness and he is talking about what he heard yesterday. They have a meeting with type of I think um uh, mm, Everyone is a victim. If you are not a victim of this, you are a victim of that. Suppose uh, when you have anger and despair in you, you, you are a victim of your anger and your despair. And that is why uh, we should know that when you are a victim of anger and despair, you suffer very deeply. Building a wall or dropping a bomb can make you suffer. That's true. But uh, having anger and despair make you suffer also and maybe more. And uh, we, are, we may be vic uh, their victims and we may be uh, uh, the victim of ourselves because uh, we, 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 we tend to believe that our enemy is outside of us, but very often we are our worst our enemy because what we have done to our body and to our mind. Uh, 
يعني احنا بنكون اعداء لنفسنا there are those uh, who are who find themselves in a very difficult situation but uh, they are not a victim of despair and anger uh, and that is why they don't suffer much as uh, other people in the same situation يعني يعني باختصار شديد هو بيحكي انه احنا ضحايا لانفسنا اه واحنا اذا بدنا نعاني بنختار اذا نعاني ولا ما نعانيش يعني الاشي بتعلق فينا اكثر. And uh, because they don't they are not victims of their anger and and and, and despair they are lucid and they can do something in order to change the situation. واذا الواحد يعني بيختار انه ما يكونش ضحيه للغضب والياس تبعه بيعمل شيء عشان يغير الوضع. The government of Israel uh, they are victims also. حكومة اسرائيل هي برضه كمان ضحية هي كمان هي ضحية للأعمال تاعتها اللي بتعملها. They are victims of their own anger, their own frustration. هي ضحية للغضب تبعها ولا الحرمان او ال اه لا الفراستيشن الحرمان يعني اللي هي بتعمله they have they are victims of their own idea at how to to have peace and safety هن ضحايا للافكار تبعتهم و و كيف انهم يعملوا سلام كيف انهم يعني مش قادرين يعملوا سلام ويعطوا امن they are victims of the idea that uh, uh, punishment will help the other side uh, not to continue uh, uh, the violence. هن ضحايا كيف انهن بيعاقبوا الطرف الاخر ومش قادرين يمنعوه من ال... من ممارسه العنف. Uh, they continue to believe that uh, violence, uh, punishment uh, is uh, is the kind of action that they have to take in order to prevent the other side to continue uh, their resistance. يعني بفكروا انه العقاب وال والعنف اللي بيعملوه يعني واللي هن ضحيه له بيقدر يمنع الطرف الثاني من ممارسه العنف برضه وال العنف والعقاب اللي بيعملوه كمان. And that is why uh, to help them to remove uh, to to remove these uh, these uh, obstacles in the head in the head عشان هيك لازم يزيحوا هاي العوائق اللي موجوده في راسهم is not only to help them but to help us هاي الاشياء مش بس بتساعدهم بتساعدنا كمان and that is why uh, what i what i what i propose to you Uh, is uh, we have to look deeply in order to identify our true enemy, where our enemy is. عشان هيك لازم ند نتعمق ند في داخلنا كتير عشان نقدر نتعرف على العدو الحقيقي موجود وين. Our true enemy to me is uh, is uh, our way of thinking, our anger, our despair. والعدو الحقيقي اللي هو الياس وال والغضب وكيف طريقه تفكيرنا كمان and that enemy is not only on the other side but is on our side it is in us واللي هو موجود يعني عمليا مش في الطرف الثاني اللي هو موجود عمليا في داخلنا both uh, israelis and palestinians are victims Even uh, their government are victims of these uh, ideas, uh, these uh, emotions. والحكومتين الإسرائيلية والفلسطينية هن ضحايا للعواطف تاعتهن. And uh, the practice recommended by Plumlish is not to destroy the human being, but to destroy the real enemy that is in the human being. وهنا في Plum Village التمرين اللي بنعمله إنه ندمر ال العواطف الهدام اللي موجودة في داخلنا. Uh, if someone is struck by a disease like um, um, uh, 
uh, like um, 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 bệnh hoa lao là cái gì? Tuberculosis. So if someone had got tuberculosis, and, and uh, if you if if you want to help him, you have to kill not the man, but to kill the bacteria, bacteria, the bacteria in them. So 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 both of um all of us are victims of these uh, bacteria called uh, violence wrong perceptions. And uh, our purpose is not to kill the the person, but to kill uh, the 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 germs. The, the the bacteria that uh, that are at the root of our suffering and they are the real enemy of the not the human being ولازم نحاول انه نقتل البكتيريا اللي هي عدونا الحقيقي مش الشخص اللي بيحملها so uh, we have an opportunity to sit down together in order to localize the real enemies and try to discuss as how to remove that enemy from us. لازم نقعد مع الشخص الثاني اللي هو يعني كانه عدونا ونستخرج منه هذا العدو الحقيقي اللي هو يعني شبهها بالبكتيريا. When 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 uh, uh, you still have a lot of anger, a lot of fear, a lot of uh, uh, despair in you, you are not lucid, you are not calm in order to undertake the right action that can bring real peace. ولما يعني انت مش قادر تسيطر على الياس وعدم الامل وهيك معناته انت مش قادر تقتل هاي الاشياء اللي في داخلك اللي هي I went to America in 1966 uh, on a speaking tour. Mm. Trying to tell uh, to tell the people in America about the suffering in Vietnam. And I remember um, one day I was speaking in New York, a big crowd, and uh, an American young man stood up and shouted at me. وقف رجل أمريكاني وصار يصرخ علي. And he said that, uh, why are you here? You should be at this time in Vietnam fighting the American uh, imperialist. Uh, in his mind, um, um, uh, he wanted uh, the Americans to be defeated in Vietnam. And he wanted me to hold a hand in order to kill American soldiers in Vietnam. But to me, uh, American soldiers in Vietnam, they were also victims. And uh, they are victims of a policy, and that policy is made in Washington. So the real enemy is not the American soldiers, but the policy made in Washington. And it's my intention to kill the policy and not kill the American soldiers. So I smiled at the young man who was very angry, and I said, "Well, I thought that the the root of the war is here in Washington. That is why I have come." <laughs> so if uh, if uh, if I can say anything, that is uh, to invite you to look deeply and to to recognize to identify the real enemy 
and that enemy should not the person. That, that enemy should be a policy, a way of thinking that has brought a lot of suffering, not only to us, but to them. يعني عدونا الحقيقي هي السياسة هي اللي بتجيبنا المعاناة مش بس إلنا كمان إلهن. And such a gathering like this, a gathering like this is an opportunity for us to sit down, to be calm, and to do just that, to identify the real enemy and to seek for ways to remove the real enemy. وجلوسنا هنا مع بعض هاي فرصة إلنا إنه يعني نشوف العدو الحقيقي ونحاول إنه يعني نواجهه أو نحكي معاه. Je suis israélienne, française aussi. Je suis née en France. Et. She wrote an article in the, in the mindfulness mail. Yes, my name is Marion. Uh, what I would like to say is that I feel a tremendous help from all this community, from the Sangha, from you. And I also feel a, a big help from the Sangha in Israel. We have a Sangha in Israel. Uh, I can't say a big Sangha, but we have a Sangha, a good Sangha and strong. And we have also, we have also a Palestinian and uh, Israeli Sangha. What I feel is missing uh, is a Palestinian Sangha. And uh, I think it is an issue for the Palestinians to decide if they want a Sangha or not. But I also would like to, s to know what you think about this. If you think it is important also to have a Palestinian Sangha uh, that is independent of the Israeli Sangha, of course. And if you intend to do something about this, and what? Thank you. Of course, uh, we wish uh, to have a Palestinian Sangha over there. And the, the question is uh, how? How to help uh, set up a Sangha like that? I think the step should be taken is um, the actual Sangha has to practice well with diligence, and invite, uh, invite uh, other, other people to come and join the practice. Invite uh, Israelis and some Palestinians to come and join the practice. Uh, you can sponsor a few from uh, from uh, from the area where things are so difficult to come and have a taste of the practice to see uh, what is the what what it uh, it looks like the joy of uh, of uh, breathing walking and looking at the sky and so on. And if you can inspire them enough uh, to go home and to set up a Sangha, uh, that will be a success. It's my hope that uh, the Sangha can work on a project called the People uh, Peace uh, Conference. There will be enough uh, Israelis and uh, Palestinians coming together in a conference. People who can represent truly uh, uh, the two nations. The people with uh, enough uh, understanding of the situation, whose voice will be respected, will be listened to by the press and others. 
uh, to organize a people peace conference. You have to uh, to prepare. It may take a year or two to prepare. And that is not only the con- for the conference. It is for the growth of the community. Because uh, you set up a a goal, a, a, um, a aim, which is the People Peace Conference, PPC. And uh, you take the opportunity to, to, to practice so that your, your Sangha can grow, uh, not only in number, but in uh, wisdom, in compassion, in insight. Because you know that in the uh, in a people peace conference, you will you will present a people peace treaty. You sign a peace treaty among the two groups that uh, that can represent the two people. Your voice should be um, should be clear, strong, and representative uh, enough to draw the attention of everyone in the political uh, circles, in the mass media, and so on. So, so this is not just for the conference, um, but for, for the growth of the Sangha. And you can win the heart of many people uh, while you are working for the conference. Because you say that the People Peace Conference will uh, will um, will produce a people peace treaty, and and political leaders will have to listen to you, because uh, the message you have uh, has a lot of uh, of values, spiritual values, po- political values, and so on. You make uh, concrete proposals uh, that. Uh, that both uh, sides have to abide to in order to have uh, real peace. And you are talking in terms of uh, reconciliation uh, and, uh, and, uh, and brotherhood, not in terms of uh, political ga- or, or territory gain. And you don't need uh, to wait until the conference uh, starts in order to begin to draw up uh, the peace treaty, the people peace treaty, you can begin right now, because this is a process of uh, looking deeply, of um, finding, um, of uh, structuring. Because in primary, you have a peace treaty for everyone, and we start from there. Peace treaty between a couple, and uh, peace treaty between two countries will not be very different. There are practices that everyone has to follow, to abide to, in order to have real peace. So the peace treaty is like um, a manual practice. And not, uh, a piece of paper cannot bring peace. It is the practice of peace that can bring peace, not a, a peace accord. That's why uh, while preparing for the conference and for the treaty, you are practicing. Because many of us get lost in our work. While we prepare for a conference, a retreat, well, we lose ourselves. We lose ourselves with the computer, with the telephone. Uh, we don't do these things as peace practice. But uh, the, the idea here is that uh, the peace conference, the people peace conference, the people peace treaty is... Uh, is uh, an opportunity for us to practice as a Sangha. And if your Sangha grow, and if the other side has a Sangha, then you can come together in that conference. They will draw the attention of many people, not only in Israel, in Palestine, but also in Europe, in America. Many of us will come. And I think that many uh, people will, s- will help sponsor the conference. They are wealthy people, they are influential people, but they don't know what to do in order to help. But if you can propose the right things, they will be happy to come and help with their talent, with their prestige, uh, with their money, 
and such a conference can be held any, anywhere in the world uh, where uh, you can be seen very very clearly the mass media can 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 report every detail of the conference uh, that will be uh, uh, um, uh, able to open the eyes of so many people not only in the Middle East but in the world and this is a true peace practice I call it a true uh, uh, peace process you always have our support we try not to be a drop of water anymore we try to be a river a real community there will be silence and we are are encouraged to enjoy our meal from the beginning to the end what we eat is not only the food but our togetherness our friendship our brotherhood which is a very uh, nourishing, very healing answer. Uh, this is a, a simple version of a monastic meal. We make it simple so that everyone can participate. And when you hear the bell ringing, uh, you bring yourself back to your mindful breathing and uh, to your mindful walking. And during the whole time of uh, standing in line and uh, serving the food, uh, you are fully yourself. Uh, we don't talk because we want to be fully uh, present to ourselves with our breathing in and out, with our smile. And we, we pay attention to the food. And then after having served, uh, we walk slowly every step. Uh, mindfully and happily to this hall and we sit down uh, the ladies on one side the gentlemen on one side uh, the monastic will be holding their bow and walk uh, and do walking meditation and everyone is is uh, invited to do the same uh, very silent very peaceful and uh, uh, in a spirit of harmony, of uh, brotherhood. And when we have come here, we sit down and we don't wait. We just uh, begin, we get continue to practice mindful breathing and enjoying ourselves together with other people. And there will be uh, the sound of the bell uh, in order to announce uh, the formal, formal meal. And uh, someone will uh, read the five uh, contemplations, uh, reminding us to enjoy our meal together as a family, to be a river and not uh, as uh, a drop of water, uh, eating in such a way that uh, freedom and peace and joy be possible during the time, the the whole time of eating. Uh, If we can have peace and joy in the inner meal, we may have a chance to have peace and joy uh, in other times. We call it a formal meal. Eating mindfully together, eating slowly, and enjoying every moment of our, of our, of our lunch. Thank you.
massage their feet and smile to them.